What NASA did with the Apollo program was amazing, but the amounts of money that you had to spend to do that were enormous. You can't just do space for the sake of doing space. So the only way to really open up the frontier is to show that the frontier is worth opening up. Our satellites and our system that we're building has to pay for itself. It has to exist for its own right, not just because it's a cool thing to do, but because it actually provides value at the end of the day. It makes the world better. Kickstarter. We've all used it to give our filmmaker or musician friends a couple of bucks for their latest passion project. We don't usually think of it as a tool that new space entrepreneurs are using to open up the frontier of space. But a company in Glasgow, Scotland did just that. Welcome to Spire, a company that believes it's on the cusp of revolutionizing the satellite industry. This is Joel Spark, one of their co-founders. The birth of Spire, um, it was a bunch of us at grad school, and there's this thing called a CubeSat, a satellite, the size of a wine bottle, that makes it infinitely easier to get a satellite in space. But up until that point, the prevailing idea was that CubeSats are toys. A typical, like, large satellite is huge. It's like the size of a bus. It's really expensive. It's billions of dollars. Most big weather or communication satellites will take 10, 15 years to get built with the expectation that it will then last another 15 years on orbit. So by the end of its lifetime, every component on board that satellite is 30 years old. A CubeSat is a completely different methodology than a traditional satellite. And here's where we come to the revolutionary idea. What if they could build a lot of these little CubeSats on the cheap, get them into space really fast, and then start linking them together? Suddenly it wouldn't be about single large satellites. It would be about a network, a constellation. But first they had to prove that they could build a single CubeSat. So they launched a Kickstarter. We thought it was a good idea, but you know that doesn't, that doesn't say a lot. A couple of crazy students in a garage you know, are building something. The Kickstarter campaign was a decision point whether to go on from there and start building this thing or go our own ways and never speak of it again. In July 2012, we started the Kickstarter campaign, hit our target in about three days. Um, so we're like, okay, now we actually have to do this. And in about 12 months, we go from napkin sketches to a satellite in space. T minus 10. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, ignition. And lift off. It's a weird sense of scale. We were watching the live stream of this rocket blasting into space where you have all your hopes and dreams and, and all these expectations cramped in this little cube. You feel like the cube could fill up the whole rocket. It feels like the rocket is your rocket. It's not a toy. This is real. A verified satellite was deployed. Congratulations on a successful deployment. So they got a CubeSat into outer space. That's when the real work began of figuring out how to build a business around them. Our first hires were not engineers, they were, they were actually business people. What we really needed to do was kind of go out to customers in various markets and see what are customers interested in, what are industries interested in. One of the things they found was that there was a real need in the area of weather prediction. So in 2017, we're starting to see a lot of NOAA and NASA satellites that are primarily used for weather reaching the end of their usable lifespan and we don't have anything that replaces it right now. There is going to be this gap where we currently have 30-year-old technology or older that's trying to keep the weather network alive. This is a simulation of just Earth and a satellite moving around it. So the dot is your satellite, and this target that I put here is, it could be extreme weather events like hurricanes and your tropical storms. And the idea is even though this satellite that I'm simulating goes around the Earth every hour and a half, that doesn't mean you see the whole world every hour and a half. This one satellite travels around, it's gonna see this target, but it's not gonna see it again until that target's rotated all the way around to the other side, so 12 hours later. And that could be a long 12 hours. 
a hurricane can change its direction in less than an hour. And depending on how much direction it changes, whether it shifts inland or outland when you're looking at a hurricane, the loss of life can go from zero to a thousand or tens of thousands of people, depending on how that path changes over time. We need to be able to replace this capability, and that's what we think you can do with CubeSats. So the idea is, instead of having one single satellite, you have a constellation or a fleet. This is just a simulation, but what it shows is that by having lots of satellites in different places, you can see how you have a, a greater view of the planet. So this particular target that you're interested in, you see very, very frequently. When you make it possible for people to get updates every minute, and that's actually showing a truer course of that weather system, you can directly impact people's lives and possibly save people. Time will tell whether or not Team Spire is able to grow their constellation of CubeSats fast enough to fill the impending weather gap. But either way, they truly believe they're on the cusp of a revolution. The beauty of CubeSats is that it's in essence a technology demonstration of a lot of things we're going to need in the future when going to other planets. What are we going to do about tracking people on the surface of Mars? We're going to have to bring with us a network of small satellites to do all the stuff that we have currently happening on Earth. We're really demonstrating the technology that can be used in the future now. They have a lot of cathedrals here in Glasgow. And one of the things I always found interesting about cathedrals is when you read the plaques on some of the really old ones, they say this was built from this time to this time. And sometimes the span of when they started, when they finished the cathedral, was hundreds of years. So the people who started and who built the foundation and saw what the cathedral could be and really designed it, didn't actually get to sit in it. But they still started. And for me, that's what I think Spire is doing now. We're building a foundation because we see that someday humanity could be using space to be better. And that's what's exciting about CubeSats. It's not what it is, it's what it is going to be.